Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today, we're going to be talking about things you should know about the rosary. Yeah, we're going to look at the history and the development of the rosary. We're going to look at the scriptural and prayer life that the rosary encourages. And we're going to tell you exactly how to pray the rosary if you don't know how to. Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, pray Pray for for us. us. excited about this episode. Um, you know, I, I love the rosary. I love Our Lady. Uh, I love history, as you know, you guys all know. And it's going to be really interesting diving into all these different elements of how the rosary came to be and where it is now. Yeah. You know, you know I mean, the rosary is so inexorably tied to the Catholic faith. I mean, if you talk to somebody uh, just in general knowledge and say, well, what's the first thing that comes to your mind with a Catholic? They're going to say, well, probably the rosary. I mean, it's yeah. that closely tied to the Catholic faith. And it's really because it is a full history of salvation on a rope. It is everything that you, all the essentials of the salvific history of of Jesus Christ in the Catholic church on, on a chain so that you can meditate on it over and over again and draw yourself closer to Jesus through Mary. It's the ultimate package deal. It yeah, is. Good. <laughs> and I, I love I love your connection to like tying to the faith, right? And the yeah. rosary definitely is like a symbol of that. And the devotion to Christ through the rosary is just such a powerful tool that you really can't separate your from your faith. And we hope that the Catholic Talk Show ties you to your faith as well. So If you want to connect with us, please, please connect with us on our social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Be sure to subscribe for our emails at our website at catholictalkshow.com. There you'll see every way that you could listen in through podcast servicing or watch our content on YouTube. If you are a viewer on YouTube, why don't you take a moment and click the button subscribe and click the little bell next to it so that whenever we produce a video, it will populate in your feed. And before we get started, we have to truly express our gratitude for all of our patrons. Those are the people who financially contribute to the show to make the studio available to our use, as well as to make sure that shows continue to be published and produced far into the future. So we want to say a big thank you to our patrons. If you're considering becoming one of our patrons, please go to patreon.com forward slash the Catholic talk show. There you will see every way that you could support us. And we have some really interesting gear as well as well-suited you know, materials as well for you to continue to develop in your faith. So we thank you for joining with us at the Catholic Talk Show. And as we get started, I think it would be really good to pray. You know, devotion to Our Lady goes all the way back to the third and fourth centuries. And if you're looking for like an exhaustive book that, not an exhausting book, but an exhaustive book on Mariology, which is the spirituality that surrounds Mary within the Catholic Church, because that spirituality, knowledge of Mary, is knowledge of Christ. So check out Mariology, a guide for priests, deacons, seminarians, and consecrated persons. And in the section on consecration, the first prayer form that developed in the history of the church, the subtum presidium, is that first petition to Our Lady, which is just absolutely gorgeous. And this significant prayer petitions Our Lady for mercy and protection. So there were different translations that developed throughout the initial years and centuries of the church, but I think it would be really cool to pray that prayer as we begin to discuss devotion to Our Lady, the rosary, and consecration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Under your protection, under your mercy, O Holy Mother of God, we take refuge. Do not reject our supplications in necessity, but deliver us from danger. You alone are chaste, alone are blessed. Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, pray Pray for for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So this... Subtuum presidium is is what we you know, and I'm I'm sure like immediately you're thinking the 
uh, the Memorare, right? So the yeah. Memorare really started to develop around the context of that as years progressed, similar with the rosary, which we're about to share historically, mm -hmm. it progressed over the years. So where does it really start? So it's good that you brought up the subtuum because that really is the first known or recorded that we have extant copies of. Uh, and those are found in the Egyptian desert. And that's why a lot of the documents that you'll find of the historical church are found in Egypt. And that's for two reasons. Number one, the climate lends to the climate and the, the technology of papyrus there lends to documents not decaying quite as quick, maybe as vellum or other techniques used elsewhere. But then also, um, it was historically a lot of raids there and a lot of monks in, in monasteries, and they would typically hide these treasured documents. And then after the sands of history blew over them, we found them later. So a lot of the things you'll find come from back then. Uh, but certainly devotion to Our Lady went back to you know, to Pentecost and to John taking Mary into his house and, uh, you know, at the cross. I mean, devotion to Mary goes back to the, to the cross, right? But again, we go back to Egypt to get the earliest development of the rosary. Um, and we go now to about the third and fourth centuries with St. Anthony and St. Pacomius, right? The great desert fathers. And Father Rich, you as a priest have to pray the Liturgy of the Hours, right? That's mm -hmm. one of the things that all consecrated religious uh, are called to do. Well, it was the same back then as well. And what their Liturgy of the Hours consisted of was praying the 150 Psalms, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, as a way but to the liturgy is like eight times a day, right? Is Se it it's like seven, seven times a day, seven typically a day. like five, but you have supplemental like mid afternoon prayer. So there's supplemental Psalms that you can pray to expand out the consecration of the hours. And that's a Jewish tradition, right? I mean, didn't the, 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 the Sanhedrin, the, 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 the high priest, didn't they pray sort of eight or seven times a day? We kind of developed it out of that. Near near the temple, I mean, the recitation of scripture and and that type of practice, which I'm definitely no scholar in right. by all means, but you know, like that practice of praying or singing the Psalms definitely preceded Christianity. Yeah, it goes all the way back to King David. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, where the Psalms were. Penned, yeah, who penned the Psalms? So, you know. But developing this, uh, you know, the sense of rosary, we would we would be remiss if we didn't share about the Psalms, right. right? You know, because when we look at the three mysteries, joyful, sorrowful, and glorious, that counts up to a hundred and fifty exactly beats. So, oh. you know, and and contemplating the Psalms is is definitely a part of the history of the rosary. Absolutely. So the rosary does develop out of that practice of praying the Psalms, right? So what these desert fathers would do to keep track, they would have the, the history of the rosary goes back to a bowl of rocks. Now that sounds pretty crazy, but it's true. So what the desert fathers would do is they would, as they were praying their Psalms, they would take a rock after one and put it into another bowl. That way they can keep track of where they were at and, you know, yeah. know that they've gotten through all of them, right? Now, as anyone who's ever used a bowl knows, and Ryan... Father Rich, all of our listeners use bowls, and they have a tendency to get knocked over and spill, right? Yeah. But I use fruity pebbles, and I didn't pray with the Psalms with them, so. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a good devotion. Nice There's more than always... a, the pebbles. <laughs> There's there a lot more, more than, than 150 in your bowl this morning, bro. You had a big heaping bowl. No, that's what he does. That's his devotion. Fruity it's 150 pebbles. fruity peb pe pebble. 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 Pe Pebby. 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 Pebby into his bowl. Pebbles. So anyway, they were, take, they were taking 150 rocks and counting them back and forth to bowls. But, you know, they'd spill over and you'd have you'd be on Psalm 78 and have to restart, <laughs> right? That's No one wants that. Not efficient. All rocks. So tradition says that St. Anthony and St. Pacomius would drill little holes through these rocks, put them on a chain so that they were easier and not spill over. And that's really the first use of a beaded prayer rope within the Christian tradition. Now... Mm. A lot of traditions use beaded prayer ropes or knotted prayer ropes. It's a very common and practical thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, prayer is meant to unite a physical uh, incarnational being like ourselves with something transcendent and having a little, I don't know, a physical tie to that mm -hmm. is very important. When you travel around the Middle East, you see it with, you know, yeah. the Muslims, the Buddhists, you know, yeah. the Greeks had traditions of, of yeah, beads. The, the Chatki. Yeah. Right. And the, and the Jesus prayer. And a lot of this does develop through mm -hmm. that. So... 
Yeah, you the have, Jesus prayer is a really good, absolutely. a really good uh, reference there. Yeah, and I, and I actually do have a Eastern, you know, prayer rope, and mm-hmm. I use that for the mm-hmm. for the Jesus prayer. That's one of my favorites. Initially, after my reversion, I had one of those Jesus prayer ropes too. And mm-hmm. how many times, like, I know there's different links. There's different lengths of, mm-hmm. of how many times, but there were some desert mystics that would pray it like nonstop. Well, yes. Pray, se- all day pray unceasingly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually, the, the, uh, sisters at Christ, the bridegroom monastery in Burton, Ohio mm-hmm. gave me mine, which is excellent. Mm-hmm. Go check them out. And for our viewers and listeners, what is the Jesus prayer? Oh, my Jesus Lord. So you breathe it in Lord Jesus Christ, son of the living God. And then as you breathe out, have, have mercy, mercy on me, a sinner. Sir. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So that one, pretty constant. That's prayer. a good prayer. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. So you then start having this tradition of the, in the church of people praying on prayer ropes. And it takes a lot of different forms, right? You'll have um, people who didn't know how to read, illiterate people. Uh, well, you can't sit there and read all the Psalms. So as an easy way to participate in this, you know, structured prayer life, they started saying Pater Nosters on these 150. And they, they said that's a suitable... For somebody who can't read, that is a suitable replacement for not reading it. You're meaning it earnestly. So you now have 150 Our Fathers, right? This tradition continues to develop throughout you know, the early church and the Middle Ages, and you'll see tons of traditions. You'll see like the Franciscan crown, which is like seven decades. You'll see the Jesus prayer. You'll see all different kinds of devotions to this. Um, but where the story of the rosary really takes off is in the early 13th century, so in the, in the you know, 12 aughts, right, with St. Dominic. Now, the story of the rosary is very tied to the Dominican order. You, cannot, you would not have the rosary without the Dominicans. The rosary is, again, inexorably tied to them. So St. Dominic was charged to uh, preach and combat a heresy in southern France at the time. And it wasn't going effectively. He was not having a good time uh, reaching these people with prayer and with preaching. And he prayed fervently. And... Uh, Our Lady gave St. Dominic the rosary, you know, Our Lady's Psalter, right? And gave him the the instructions on on how to pray it. And that's debatable, right? That's the there are people that debate that. There's people who debate that because there's no record of the time. Right. Because we have records from that, but there's no record of the time of St. Dominic saying, you know, and then on this date, our lady appeared. Right. But you'll see, you know, maybe 150 years later or so that the rosary tradition had had a little bit of a popularity rise around the same time time of St. Dominic, but then it faded a little bit into obscurity, right? It wasn't until mm. Blessed Alan de Roque, right, another Dominican, he really, uh, being a Dominican, you know, it's logical that this prayer habit was passed down from Dominic to the Dominicans and to him, and he really took that and ran with it. And it's really his work, almost as in the apostle of the rosary. Yeah, but you were you were talking about the Our Father and the Psalms, but and now we're talking about the rosary. So mm-hmm. was this like a bunch of beads given to him, saying, "Hey, say the Our Father on them," or like, where are we with the actual prayers? With the here? actual prayers, yeah, because yeah, we have the Psalms, like we have the Psalms, and then see, now but we no, have, yeah, it was given to Saint Dominic as a a. a, a Marian devotion. It was Our Lady Psalter. So at that moment, that rosary was dedicated to contemplating the life of Christ through Mary. So Marian know, Psalter. Yes. Yeah, mm. um, so it was St. Alan de Roque who really spread this out. Now, there was another Dominic who was not a Dominican, Saint, uh, not, I don't know if he's Saint, Dominic of Prussia, who helped to develop in the interim time as well the idea of. So we know that at the time of Alan de Rock that you say Hail Marys mm-hmm. on this, yep. right? Because he would then, Dominic of Prussia, would add a meditation to the end of each Hail Mary, which is how our mysteries developed, right? So that's why we had those, those first three sets of mysteries of the rosary, right? Um, but, you know, interestingly enough, the, the, the Hail Mary prayer, you know, we talked about the subtuum. The Hail Mary prayer did not take its final form until the 16th century, right? So it was still a Marian Psalter, right? But over time, it developed in absolutely, yeah. You know, and our Rosary still has developed to this yeah, day. Yeah, we have the Luminous Mysteries. Well, and we have the Fatima prayer. And the Fatima yeah, prayer. The Fatima right? prayer. It, it's interest. It's. I think it's a very, very important point to make that you see the development of liturgy 
happening from the Last Supper to the implementation and and drawing, you know, the apostolic foundations of the faith and what they did when they celebrated Eucharist and liturgically how we've emerged through the many centuries of the church yeah. to our present liturgy. And even with Vatican II, Vatican II was looking at all of these different additions to the liturgy that were attached into it. And they started reflecting like, okay, what are the things that are essential to the liturgy that is the celebration of Eucharist? Mm -hmm. So they kind of, they, they really focused in on that. And that's what we have in the Novus Ordo now yeah. is that, is that, you know, that simpler form of liturgy, but you see the you see the development, and I love this about the rosary too. So right. you have 13th century Saint Dominic, you have heresy, and what I love is Saint Dominic is held up to be one of the best preachers in, in yeah. the history of the church, mm -hmm. and it's the order of okay. preachers, the Dominicans, yep. and he's he's facing you know the Al, what is it the Alba Albigensian um, you know heresy. And this is an inspiration given by Our Lady to combat heresy. Yeah. And then now you see it starting to develop and really develop through the context of community, of communal mm -hmm. life within the Dominical, Dominican order. And then it starts to spread. So where does it, where, yeah, where does it find its greatest reach and spread before it was held up to be a universally approved and, and recommended sure. prayer? So again, so we're taking it from the monks in the desert with the bowl of rocks, and we've already went all the way through from Dominic to Dominic of Prussia to Saint Al or to Blessed Alan, um, and from there it really it really became a very popular uh, devotion among the laity, right? But it didn't really have like full church approval. It wasn't what you would see today. Was it Alan. concentrated just yeah, to France like, or in northern France, Flanders, you know, mm -hmm. Belgium, that it was, area? It was probably very effective too, because of what you mentioned previously that a lot of people still couldn't read. Absolutely, and that was when a lot of artwork was being put in mm -hmm. churches, and people were explaining the gospels to people using art mm -hmm. and other devotional forms. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. I guess a good way to get to how it really got enormous and how it became a, a quintessential prayer of the church or quintessential prayer habit and meditation um, I, is tied to the development of the Hail Mary. So the Hail Mary is, everyone knows the Hail Mary, right? But the Hail Mary itself didn't get into its final form until 1568, right? Um, and it got its final form at Trent. So the earliest form of the prayer was just the recitation of the angelic salutation, right? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, which comes from Luke 1. Mm -hmm. So around the, around the 11th century, early 11th century, they started adding the words of Elizabeth uh, during the visitation, which is blessed art thou among the women. The 11th century? Yeah, 1050 mm -hmm. AD, right around mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. They started yeah. adding the, uh, the Elizabethan greeting, right? So Mary said, all generations will call me blessed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blessed art so thou was among right women. So that was right away. Yep. Oh, well, that was right. Yeah. 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 So you have that. And then around the 11th century, they start adding in the Elizabethan salutation, mm -hmm. which is blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. I've got to say that that's my favorite part of the Hail Mary, because Our Lady says in her own words, all generations will call me blessed. And every time that I pray the rosary, I thank God for the rosary one, because it gives me a chance to be able to say and to and to be a part of this generation that calls Mary blessed. Yeah. And it's just interesting that there's a, a world out there and there's there are cults of people out there that oppose that. That one, it's it says in scripture. Yeah. But two, like there is an opposition. Like there was yeah. somebody on our on our feed recently that I read, and I was like, my I was heartbroken. And he said something along the lines of, well, Mary is a peasant girl. Yeah. Okay, look, guys, we're all boys here, right? And when you're a kid and you get into a fight with someone that you maybe can't <laughs> take, what you do? You, you insult their mom, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, well, you beat me at basketball. Well, your mom's so, f yeah. you know, fat, whatever, right? I think a lot of that from Protestants is really directed not at Mary. It's really meant as an insult towards Catholics because she is our mother. I could see Jesus at four year old like, I'm not listening to you. Right. You're a peasant girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're right. yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's, <laughs> not gonna turn, that's not going to turn. That's not going to turn well. So then, 
the I guess the the petition to Mary was added by Saint Peter Canisius in yeah. uh, 1555 in his catechism, and Saint Peter was really um, instrumental in the Council of Trent. Um, and then in Trent, they also added the words "now and at the hour of our death." Right? That you know. Okay, pray for us. Well, when? Now and at the hour of our death. Yeah. Amen. So that final form was completed by 1568. Mm-hmm. Now, so essentially, it's a script. It's scripturally based, scriptural, and then with just a petition. petition. That's it. Yeah, we're reading scripture and then asking Mary to intercede. For yes. Us. Mm-hmm. So then, three years after its final approved form took shape, well, we have a momentous event in human history. Right? We have the Battle of Lepanto. Now, the Battle of Lepanto is where the rosary went from a regional devotional prayer to a supernova within the church, where it became so bright that it shone over all of Christendom and saved Christendom, right? So at the Battle of Lepanto, the the Ottoman Turks were knocking on the doors of Europe, and it looked like very little was going to be able to stop them. They were the dominant military force of the day. And the Holy League was able to get together a a resistance fleet and Pope um, Pius V, again, a Dominican, right? So again, the story is always tied back to the Dominicans. Um, You know, interestingly enough, the Popes wear white today because Pope Pius V, as a Dominican, started wearing white and they found it fitting and it continued on. Before that, Popes wore red like a cardinal. Yeah, and it's like there's a Holy League too that's in Wisconsin. Well, they, there's, they there's pray a, the Rosary. Yeah, the Holy League. There's but they're they're like they they say like the rosary like the Rosary is a weapon, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like so mm-hmm. in in battle, mm-hmm. you know. Absolutely. So it's kind of kind of interesting how that tradition's kind of <clears throat> kept mm-hmm. on too as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of organizations take the name of the Holy League because it was so instrumental in saving the West. And at this prayer, Pope Pius V. Uh, the Dominican Pope begged all of Christendom to start praying the rosary because before that, you know, it was, it was popular prayer, but not incredibly popular. But when this against all odds, the Holy league defeated the, the Turks. Well, you know, this prayer, like I said, went supernova and it never has gone away from the popular devotion of the church since. Mm. Uh, so that's, you know, and that feast day was originally October 7th, which is, the, it was originally called uh, the Feast of Our Lady of Victory, but it has since been renamed to the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary because it marks that historic battle and that protection that we all flew to, like the sub to them, now under the protection of Our Lady uh, through the supplications of the Rosary. So that's a very brief but circuitous mm-hmm. uh, history of the Rosary. But I think one last point that, that will allow us to get into the next segment of this is well, why are they called rosary beads, right? Well, have you ever thought of where the word bead mm-hmm. comes from? It just seems like so common. Well, the word bead actually goes back to the original English and then before that, the old German where English developed from, uh, gebet or or bead, right? Like you have you ever heard of venerable bead? Mm-hmm. Bead just meant a prayer. So, you know, beads mean prayer. And the word rosary goes back to rosarium, which means a... A, a garden of roses for Our Lady. So mm-hmm. that's the, you know. And that was coined at the end of the 16th century, mm-hmm. 1597, when Pope Sixtus V put in Jesus in the prayer. So, uh, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, coined rosary, like that, that sense of rosary became the applicable term for the devotion. And then now we're going into, you know, the, the 17th century, so you think like 15, this is 1597, 1565, St. Augustine was, was uh, you know, established. 1531 is Our Lady of Guadalupe. Mm-hmm. So 16th century is kind of a huge deal, yeah. you know. It's the Marian century. It's the Marian century. Mm-hmm. You you look at the, the Battle well, of Le, I mean, that, that's, that's really that's, fascinating. And then to look at the Dominicans, too. You know, too. in Lepanto, they were flying flags that had Our Lady of Guadalupe on the ships. Isn't this incredible? It's amazing. Our yeah. Lady's hand is so huge. Our Lady of La Leche in, in St. Augustine, you know, that devotion coming with the Spaniards toward the end of the 16th century, establishing the first shrine right here in St. Augustine for the United States of America. It's it's just yeah. incredible to see Our Lady's hand so influential, intervening and when you think of that sub to kind of bring it all the way back to the beginning, yep. under your protection, 
You know, yeah. under your care for us, Blessed Virgin Mary, we fly to to your patronage, you know? And and that is such a, a really important point, I think, especially for us today, because there's a lot of people who are stressed, anxious about the world, um, stressed and anxious about their life. Everyone wants their mommy. And and everybody needs our mother's right. protection and our yeah. mother's care. And if you're sitting out there and you you're listening in or you're viewing and and you don't pray the rosary, give it a give it a shot. And we're about to go into yeah, like and, the, the details and, and, of how to pray the rosary, but and you should like definitely the, do that. And there's a lot of markers along the way. Like when you pick up the rosary, I mean it's just like, you know, when you're talking about the time that all this occurred, it just so happened that we were just beginning to discover all these new lands yeah. from the West and, and begin to bring civilization to a lot of, you know, very dark and sometimes, you know, interesting uh, tribes. But like there's a markers along the way that are not even like just like the Nina, the Pinta and the Santa Maria. I mean, it's yeah. like the look at the names of those boats. Yeah. You know, it's like the girl, the painting, you know, yeah. Maria. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I feel that the 16th century is such a monumentous time in history where the new world is mm -hmm. being promoted around the known world right. and development advancement was all being rooted in devotion to God devotion to our lady devotion to the revelation of the son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the greatest act of evangelization in the history of the world up until that point occurred in the New Americas. Absolutely. Right. And it was all done at the hand of Our Lady. So right now, we're going through a transitional phase in the world. We're developing all this new technology. We're looking out into the universe, into the stars, into Mars, and we're talking about colonization and all of these different things. And there's a lot of pressure happening in the world. Well, let's not be given to fear and destruction and apocalyptic tones like this is the end times. Let's petition Our Lady again yeah. and say, as we're growing, as we're developing, let's, under your protection, be guided in this. Yeah. And and I think there's such peace in that. And there's such peace in the Holy Rosary. Yeah, I mean, you know, what I was trying to say was like, I, like when there's markers along the way, you, spiritually, you're trying... Like you have anxiety, you're, there's always the, the fear of the unknown. Yeah. There, there's always the need for you to have peace as you're moving out in your life, in your career, in your whatever it is, right? And having that protection along the way is so very important, just personally and spiritually, where she will give you markers along mm -hmm. the way. And mm -hmm. you look at like how they went from, you know, Mexico and, and, you know, all the way up through Texas, there's a lot of history there. And then, you know, the, the missions of yeah. California, there's still, they, from that mission, there's yes. even more road work that's been laid yes. in, in the internet. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Like, look at what we about, do. You, you're yeah. talking about Mars and everything. It's like, you just, all, all this stuff happened with interpersonal, like, expedition. Yes, yeah, you brother, can, certainly, right? you can you, certainly see Mary's hand. In guiding and protecting people for her son so that they can win, so that she can help, you know, Christ keep be kept close to everyone. Dude, I've got to say, I, I love especially what you said about the Internet because of what we're doing here at the Catholic Talk Show and what you're a part of as well. Because Our Lady of Guadalupe is we are consecrated to her and who we are at Fusati and who we are with the Catholic Talk Show and who you are, my brothers and sisters our our wonderful wonderful community and we want to say a big thank you for participating in this show in your own way but most importantly praying so we want to encourage you to pray the rosary and we want to take a moment and just say a big thank you to our sponsors ave maria university named after the blessed virgin mary is one of our sponsors under that type of spirituality and devotion that we've been talking about from the beginning of the show is at the heart of the university. From my earliest memories of being a student at Ave Maria University, one of my favorite memories was walking the rosary with the community and the priests. And we would pray the rosary and walk around campus and conclude our day with night prayer. Ave Maria University is an outstanding Catholic institution with over 30 majors and incredible academics and spirituality. So if you know somebody out there that is searching for a school for a university to attend, make sure you encourage them to look into Ave Maria University. 
Our other sponsor, Exodus 90, is an outstanding program for men, a 90-day program of austerity and prayer, devotion in developing one's masculinity after the model of Jesus Christ our Lord, cold showers, limited exposure to sports and the world, getting away from the busyness of the world to enter into the simplicity of life, prayer, contemplation, and fraternity. If you're looking for a program like that, there's been over 17,000 men that have participated in this already. So if you're out there considering it, consider no longer. Try out Exodus 90. You will not be disappointed. Trust me. All right. Thank you for that. You're welcome. No problem. So I think the next thing that would make sense to talk about is just really the spirituality and what, okay, we talked about the history and we talked about uh, you know, the, the spread of it throughout the world and how it reached all the areas. But what really is the rosary? The rosary really is a reflection on the life of Christ, right? It is not this um, pagan devotion to worshiping Mary. It is a reflection on scripture. The rosary, people say, is scripture on a chain, you know? Um, so, Father, would you explain a little bit on on really how the rosary does tie into scripture and what the, I guess, we can get into the practical of praying it later on, but sure. really the concept of what you do with a with mm-hmm. a bead and why there's a reflection and decades and things like mm-hmm. that and what and, the mysteries are. And even with the details of praying the rosary, we'll put a link in the in the comment section sure. for you, to, yeah, we'll for you to use that as well. But, you know, there's fantastic resources out there that tie, you know, the 15 or 20 mysteries of the rosary. So the first 15 are the ones that we've been talking a lot about. Mm -hmm. And we reference St. John Paul II and his inclusion of the luminous mysteries. But the first 15, joyful, and then the sorrowful and the glorious mysteries, all center around meditating on the history of salvation from the moment of the Annunciation when Gabriel announced to Mary, and then all the way up to the coronation of Mary, where she is crowned queen of heaven and earth. Which mm-hmm. people will say is not biblical, but it's when you look at the book of Revelations, it's right there. Exactly. So in the tradition of the Catholic faith, which precedes the the contrary voices of also the 16th century, which is also very interesting, but I won't go on a tangent <laughs> with that. The, you know, to consider that meditating on the life of Christ and using the rosary to its fullest capacity, you should have scriptural contact with all of the occasions of what you're meditating on. So in respect to the rosary itself, it's set up with five sets of decades. And what is a decade? From the Latin root meaning 10, you have one Our Father and 10 Hail Marys. And during that decade, you would meditate on the first mystery that you're praying. So say you're beginning with the joyful mysteries, you would focus on the Annunciation. Okay. Then you move to the visitation. Then you move to the birth of Christ. Then you move to the presentation in the temple. Then you move to the finding of Jesus in the temple, right? Those all are joyful things. All joyful, in all joyful things. And, you know, then from there, you conclude your joyful mysteries and you can move very easily if you wanted to pray successive rosaries. I have, I have a rosary that actually has 20 mysteries on it that I picked up from wow. Magigoria a long time ago, where you could sit there and pray for an hour with Our Lady wow. and meditate on the entirety of of the mystery of salvation and the person of Jesus Christ, including the luminous mysteries. So, if so you, what are the sorrow? Why don't you, since you already said that, what are the sorrowful and the glorious? So, so the the well. Before I get into that, like what I'd like to share with you is the luminous mysteries. So, the luminous mysteries would be the next mysteries if you want to participate in what Saint John Paul II included in his pastoral care. So, he included first time in history from this you know, occasion yeah. in 1597. So fast forward to St. John Paul II, in his meditation and his consecration to Our Lady, he included the luminous mysteries, which includes the proclamation of the kingdom of God. Okay. Um, baptism. No, baptism. Excuse me. Yeah, baptism yeah, I'm sorry. first. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> baptism. You know, I got to admit, I'm... 
I forget the mysteries of the rosary all the time. <laughs> I was so, just about thinking you were going to say, how dare you? You're a priest and you don't know this. <laughs> Dude, I forget them all the time. So I, I, I got a rosary that has, with our father bead, is a four-way bead, and you roll it and it tells you the mystery. Oh, that's cool. Because I forget cool. them. I do. Where did you find that? My uh, my wife and my kids bought it for me. That's pretty cool. That's a, that's a really, yeah, I'll, really I'll cool. I'll bring it next time. Yeah. It's, it's super helpful because I, I, I'm a terrible per out. Catholic, you know? Baptism of the Lord. Wedding Feast of Cana, the Proclamation of the Kingdom of God, Transfiguration, and then the Institution of Eucharist, yep. which is my favorite mystery of the Luminous Mysteries to meditate on. Just because you're a priest. <laughs> <laughs> I just love Jesus We should have saved this as an Inquisition question to see if he could have named all <laughs> yeah, 20. Would've... <laughs> that would have been great, darn it. <laughs> so then if you included the Luminous Mysteries, um, that would be the, the next set of five decades. Then let's continue. Then we have the um, sorrowful mysteries before the glorious mysteries. So the first sorrowful mystery is the agony in the garden. The second sorrowful mystery is the scourging of the pillar. The third sorrowful mystery is the crowning of thorns. The fourth sorrowful mystery is... Is the carrying of the cross? It, it you seems like you're taking your quiz right I now. Know, I'm trying man, to pass. Back in my brain. <laughs> He's like, this is the. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Break it's that intense, up. man. I feel like all these people are watching <laughs> me. Are, you're on the spot. I know. Wait, hold on, Kyle. Can we get the Inquisition graphic up? <laughs> yeah, this is intense. Okay. okay. And then the the, the, <laughs> the fifth sorrowful the, mystery. The fifth sorrowful mystery is crucifixion. <laughs> so. The crucifixion is the fifth uh, sorrowful mystery. Okay. And then if you wanted to continue, you would go to the glorious mysteries. And this would conclude all of the mysteries in the tradition of the Catholic faith today. So the gl first glorious mystery is the resurrection. <laughs> the second glorious mystery is the ascension. The third glorious mystery is Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit. Also one of my favorite mysteries to pray on. I was ordained a priest on, on nice. the Feast of Pentecost. And then the fourth glorious mystery is the ascension, the, uh, the um, assumption. assumption of Mary. Oh, God. How does this even happen? I know, I did it. Okay, assumption. I just feel pressured right now. <laughs> you do look Assumption. Pressured. I feel, I'm like, my face is probably beat red like my rosary. <laughs> So assumption of Mary and then coronation yeah. of Mary. Don't you guys think it's cool that all these mysteries of the life of Christ start and end with Mary receiving Jesus mm. and then Mary being taken up into heaven by Jesus. So, mm. so on one corner, you have Jesus coming into the world through Mary's mm. yes, and Mary coming up and being crowned a queen in heaven. I've never considered end. that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, I've never thought cool. about that. That's awesome. I just thought about it while you were taking your test. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you weren't on the hot seat. You didn't come out with something oh, super inspiring. <laughs> that yeah, was, I would have failed that probably. That was beautiful, I, man. I have my little guide. It's like a triptych, and that's yeah. what I use every time because I would forget. Thank them. you for presenting that. Though. So <clears throat> I'm holding. I'm holding these rosaries, and this was my great grandmother's rosary. And she died right before I was born. So I received her great maternal blessing uh, while I was in my mother's womb. And then these were the rosaries that my grandmother prayed with her whole life. And then she had these in her hand when she died. And then I received these from her. And I cherish That's these. beautiful, man. Yeah. Yeah. I lost mine. That's terrible. <laughs> <I know. laughs> my great grandma. Yeah, oh, my great no. my great grandmother. Uh, she was blind at the end of my life, and uh, or at the end of her life. And, and she was uh, blind and managed to keep on to it. Yeah, I mean, and she would cook. Didn't. She would cook dinner for us every Sunday after church, and she would pray the rosary every day. And then my aunt mm. Carol Labuciano de la Croce, <laughs> she prays the rosary still. God mm. bless her soul. Uh, every single night, she's been praying it for like fifty years. Wow. Every night, dude. Oh wow, it's crazy. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I think everyone out there and every single Catholic should pray the rosary every single day. You yeah. really should. You can mm -hmm. find time for it. Even if, if you're not doing 150 or four decades, pray whatever the the um, the day, the, the mysteries for that day. So it's Monday, joyful, Tuesday, sorrowful, Wednesday, glorious, Thursday, luminous, Friday, sorrowful, Saturday, joyful, Sunday, glorious. Like mm -hmm. you could do just that. But a rosary, if you're doing 150, 
will take you about 45 minutes, an hour. Find time mm-hmm. for it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Check no. this check this quote out from St. Louis de Montfort, which if you want oh, gosh. the saint who knows, yeah. who is the most authoritative saint on Mariology, uh, brilliant, brilliant gift to the church, check out St. Louis de Montfort. But listen to this quote, and this is the first time I ever came across it. Even if you are on the brink of damnation, even if you have one foot in hell, Even if you have sold your soul to the devil as sorcerers do, who practice black magic, and even if you are a heretic, as obstinate as a devil, sooner or later you will be converted and will amend your life and will save your soul if, and mark well what I say, if you say the Holy Rosary devoutly, Every day until death for the purpose of knowing the truth and obtaining contrition and pardon for your sins. Mm. What a powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not saying that the rosary is like a magic spell that will get you out of hell. What he's saying is, I nah, think that's right. it was echoed by Fulton Sheen that uh, you can't be a sinner and pray the rosary. You'll either stop saying the rosary and continue sinning, or you'll stop sinning and continue praying the rosary. They really don't exist in the same space. They can't. Mm-hmm. It, it, and it's it's true. I mean, whenever I'm having a rough a rough day, or if I'm if I'm driving from here to there or wherever, and I'm having a, you know I feel tension, I'll pull out the rosary and I'll start praying the rosary. Yeah. And I always say to people, no matter what you've got going on inside, if you pull out the rosary, there is nothing that four rosaries yeah. in a row won't work out of you. Mm-hmm. And and it's very very true. Yeah, I remember uh, praying the rosary for the first time. I used to drive two hours to work, and I'd listen to tapes back when cassette tapes were out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'd pray the rosary because um, some girl in my you know young adult thing gave it to me, and that was just that was so transforming. I just did it every day for probably mm-hmm. a year and a half. It was mm-hmm. awesome, mm-hmm. absolutely awesome. You know, you mentioned the the luminous mysteries, and you'll see a lot of trads have problem with the luminous mysteries. They're like, oh, you're adding to the rosary and oh, you, how you modernists. Okay, number one, the luminous mysteries are, they're awesome. They close the loop on the, you know, the, 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 minis- the ministry of Christ. They really do. <laughs> they I mean, they're, the they're incredibly scriptural and they're, they're amazing. And I think as we already showed the the rosary has developed, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was 1917, something was added to the rosary in the Fatima prayer. So it's just, I guess, that concept that anything new and anything after the 1955 well, missile. It's pastoral care, like right. you said. The Pope was pastorally caring for you. If you don't like his pastoral mm-hmm. care, then just say the other three. Right. But you know, I've like, never heard anybody say that, by oh, the way. Oh, there's, there are a lot of critics. They just like, there are a lot, there yeah, are a lot of critics. Yeah, they're like the certain doctor. But where, do you, where can you go back in history and say this is the golden period? <laughs> I mean, we've talked about the rocks. Right. Yeah, well, you can't go back and you say this is a golden period. Yeah, this is a golden period. It's not, go back it's not because of the, you know, the rock age was, yeah. you know, that this was the greatest age and we need to go back to the liturgical practices of that time. No, like, yeah. there's development, I mean, like, there's progress. to say the day, you even know? Like, yeah. e- even though, you know, you say that the, the Trinity Mass was, you know, it's the way it's been forever or whatever. No, oh, man, these guys were meeting in homes and catacombs and all this other stuff, man, and like... The DDIK came out with the, you know, with how they were celebrating mass. And these guys were working through this stuff then, yeah. you know, I mean, it's not. And then, then all of a sudden it just becomes something. And then that's it forever. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, there's, there's no, there's no and, logic. And it's, it's not the conclusion of revelation. Right. So before God and the beatific vision, you know, what we're, what we're longing for is heaven and the new Jerusalem, the new earth and yeah. the resurrection of the body and redemption to, to occur. So no, there is still more for us to receive yeah. in revelation. So we need to stay the course. Yeah. No matter what we're suffering in history, the liturgy is a consolation to us. The devotion to our lady and praying the rosary and meditating on the life of Christ is a consolation for us because revelation is continuous. Yeah. So we, we must 
continually to have that disposition of receptivity. There is no greater devotion in the history of the world right. to develop that receptivity than the rosary. There is no one greater that is an example of receptivity than the Blessed Virgin Mary. So pray the rosary today. Absolutely. And I am, <laughs> today. Today. <laughs> and, and, and let me say this too. I feel... You know, Sheil, what did what did you say to me earlier today about you know th this show exactly? Like you know, well, we got to be on our game about it. You know, no, we got to not on our not on our oh, game. No, that is, we've done 105 episodes and never done an episode on. Or hundred plus episodes, never done an episode on the rosary. We're terrible people for that. We've talked feel, about it, I'm sure. Well, we have. Well, we but, have. We know. talked about Our Lady on a number of different, mm -hmm. but we've never talked about the actual rosary. And then I was looking at the table, and I'm like, we don't have a statue of Our Lady on the table. Yeah. I feel like St. John Paul II looking at the facade of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome and saying, we don't have a statue of Our Lady up here. Yeah. We, we don't have he, a... He did that? He included no. that beautiful mosaic near the papal apartments yeah. on the facade oh, now. Yeah, gorgeous, that. gorgeous yeah, uh, mosaic. Yeah. So now what we have over our shoulders here is a statue of Our Lady and it was given to me by a priest who also gave me this book on Mariology, Father Frank Harrius, may he rest in peace, uh, a former military chaplain. He was a priest here in the Diocese of St. Augustine. Um, but he really encouraged uh, a devotion, devotion to Our Lady. And um, and now she's going to stay there. And now she's going to she's going to stick around. It's just it's incredible. It's That's just awesome. such That's a beautiful about time. gift. About time. Mm -hmm. Truly. Truly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was I mean, a we blessing. got David Lee Roth, but we got no hey, Mary yeah. Mother of God. <laughs> <laughs> That's Shame bad. on us. Yeah. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, we want to thank you for connecting with us today. We ask for your continued prayers and your intercession and know that our prayers are with you. Together, we will continue to walk this path, meditating on the life of Christ with the hand of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We hope that this show has illuminated a little bit more about the history of the rosary and the devotion of the Holy Rosary. Together, we will conquer all things through the heart of Mary in love with the heart of Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, God bless you and have a great week. Yeah.